morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Well, I'm setting up to spray today. I want to try out the uh, new low priced Timber Tech airbrush. Uh, but I got a bit of a disappointment going on. It's got nothing to do with the new airbrush. It's sort of got something to do with my my Pache H. And what the problem is is that, and I don't know why I didn't I don't know why I didn't discover this earlier. Well, probably because I didn't check. But these will not fit in, into the into the pache. Now I can get them to fit if I if I take let's see if I take this off here. Okay, I can get them to fit like that. But then I can't get the I can't get the hose on. And no matter what combination of adapters and quick connects and anything else I try to use here, it it just will not fit. Uh, it it's too bad because I I can see where these where these jars would actually be quite good because the way the siphon comes down, it sort of goes into the corner here the way the paint naturally wants to flow. And, uh, you know, this, this part does fit nicely into here, just this, just the same as the stuff that came with, with the Pache airbrush. And if I, if I could take this off, you know, if I take this adapter off, because the thre the, the size of the, of the threads here is much smaller than, than what this is, it might, it might have gone. In other words, these were a waste of money. No, when when I bought them, it, it said that they fit the Pache airbrush, but it didn't say the Pache H. So it, chances are they will fit an, another model of Pache, but not this one. And I don't want to be do, trying to, you know, person sort of thinks, well, maybe if I could bend these down, but I don't think I can bend these. They look they look pretty solid. And I probably end up breaking something. Uh, I'm gonna just check and see. Uh, I know Amazon does have a, a an easy return policy, but in a case like this, it's not completely free. I think you have to pay the the freight back. Uh, I uh, I don't know. Some if if you if you buy it and it's your fault, you don't get all your money back. <laughs> Anyway, um, we'll worry about that later. Let's continue to get ourselves set up here. Get my plastic down on the green cloth, and uh, uh, yeah, we want to. I want to see if I can't, uh, you know, get get this thing sprayed, and and also uh, try try out the new airbrush. Uh, I don't see any reason why it, it it shouldn't work. I was thinking this morning. You know, for for what this is compared to, like this comes with, with uh, the 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 0.5 millimeter, uh, 0.5 uh, millimeter needle, and then it also comes with a with a with a 0.3 and a 0.7 or 8, I believe it is. Now, if you get all of that in the Iwata, this is is literally ten times or more cheaper. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Now, is it going to work? I think it will. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's continue to set up here and don't buy these for your Pache H. Okay, here's something that I noticed about the uh, new TimberTech airbrush. It does not have a tendency to want to catch when you want to remove it. Whereas, for some reason, and it's probably something that I could probably fix, uh, the the Iwata 
will 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 catch. There's this sort of a not not seriously, but just as kind of an annoying thing. It it doesn't come out e uh, easily. Now <laughs> now that I'm trying to show you that it'll catch, and you know, <laughs> maybe uh, if I was to take the I don't think there's anything in here. No. Yeah, if I was to take my my knife and and reshape that inside there, enlarge the hole, maybe. Yeah. Okay, let's get this back on here. Yeah, this this comes out a lot easier. Um, okay. Now another thing. When I'm spraying this gray plastic with the 19, it's it's really easy to put too much on, or maybe none at all. And uh, I was noticing that when I was spraying the 19 on on the when it was on the rotating box, what I was going by was when the masking tape and everything that it was fastened down onto, you know, was completely painted. I knew that in all probability. So was the part. Okay, so that's what this piece of paper is behind here. I should be able to see the, uh, you know, silhouetted. Uh, right now, they, they recommend 20 pounds. I'm thinking that that might be just a little bit too powerful. I'm going to try a lower pressure. Yeah, we'll try a lower pressure. Obviously, there's no paint in it yet. I'm just going to use the small cup here. It'll be a lot easier to clean out. We're not going to need very much, you know, to see how this thing works. Not like I'm painting the hull or something. Um, okay, let's uh, continue on. We're getting very close to actually uh, being able to try this thing out. Okay, I got myself some soapy water here to so I can reuse my uh, pipette. And uh, I shook this up. I couldn't remember what the F stood for, and it took me, oh, it must have been a couple of hours. But as, as best I remember, when I put the F on here, it stood for 50%. That's the only thing I can think of, because usually I'll put a T on them when it's been thinned. So maybe if you somebody remembers, did I put an F on there for 50%? Because I'm pretty sure this is the one that I thinned it down 50-50. It is probably thickened out a little bit by now, but anyway. And we got ourselves a, whoops. That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. I guess when I'm wearing rubber gloves, I have to move a little slower. That, that should stay there. All right. Now, I have turned the uh, air pressure down to 10 pounds instead of 20. And we'll just slowly increase it if it doesn't want to work. But uh, it, it should work. Now, this airbrush has a, a feature on it that the Iwata doesn't. This this can be turned in so that the, the uh, needle can only be pulled back a certain distance. And uh, I think it might turn out to be something that I want to take advantage of here. Well, we'll test it out. I mean, that's the whole idea. We're, we're testing this out. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I took the advice of probably several viewers over the last few years. Uh, and the suggestion had been made several times. Why don't you get yourself an inexpensive airbrush compressor that you can have like under the table or here by the model model table that uh, so that you don't have to keep running up and down the stairs when you want to use your airbrush. Maybe you feel more like using it. So this morning I went on Amazon about an hour ago, I guess, and uh, and I ordered one. I ordered Amazon's Choice, and it was pretty reasonably priced. It should be here in about a week. All right. Um, uh, 
Should have I maybe have primed this with the, you know, somehow that, that looks kind of thick. Maybe it will take uh, 20 pounds. I, I imagine this stuff would thicken out. <laughs> I instinctively was looking for the cap to put on here. I just have to be a little bit more careful, I guess. All right. Now we'll get our fan going. Let's, uh, let's move in here. I'll try not to move this out of the field of view here. I'm, I'm going to have to obviously twist it so that I can come in this way and then also this way. Maybe I'll, I'll increase the volume just a little bit here. Okay, I forgot to zoom back in when I did the second half, but uh, um, I'm very pleased so far. Uh, it's it's uh, it's working just great. I, I can't see anything wrong with the way it's working here. Um, maybe cleanup is going to be a little harder, or, or maybe it'll be easier. I don't know. Anyway, what I'm going to do with uh, with this now is I'm going to turn everything around here and uh, and paint the other side. I'll just I'll do that off camera. Um, I don't know how else I can test this out unless maybe I was to increase the air pressure up a bit. Right now I'm at 10 pounds. Just let me double check here. Yeah, I'm at 10 pounds or maybe a little less. Let's just uh, increase it here to uh, 20. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try the other side at 20.
Oh, by the way, Chris, I really appreciate these uh, alligator clips. They're great. Now, this this time I'm going to just eyeball it here. Um, can I zoom you in, maybe? Okay, I, I hope I got it in focus there. And right now we're at uh, 20 pounds. Now, let's not forget our fan. Okay, um, <clears throat> we'll let that dry and take a close look at it. Well, what do I think? I've only used it the one time, so I can only base my opinion on the one time. And I'm, I'm very happy. I think I've said that a few times. It does work, and it did work well. When I was taking it apart, I had a sort of a funny thing happen. Uh, I, this... Uh, not right here. It was on too tight to loosen with my fingers, so I grabbed the little wrench and I tried to get the little wrench on and, and it would almost fit, but not quite. And I thought, oh, this cheap piece of junk. <laughs> Those sort of thoughts were walking, running through my mind. Couldn't they have got the wrench right? And then I realized that I grabbed the Iwata wrench. <laughs> but when I got the right wrench, then we're good to go again. Uh, when I removed the needle, then removing the needle was a, a little bit stiffer. It didn't have the smooth feel that the Iwata had. Um, but maybe it just needs to be to put a little bit of lubricant on it. And also it does not seem to look this, as shiny. And at first I thought it's made of aluminum. So I grabbed my magnet to see if the magnet would stick to it and it did. So it, it is some kind of steel. Uh, <laughs> I would assume it's some sort of stainless steel I would hope. Um, one of the features that I do really like is this adjustment on the back that prevents the needle from coming opening up more than you want it to. I, I really like that. Um, uh, another thing that I like is that when, when I go to, to, to fasten this, this on, and uh, the, the threads start right away. Whereas sometimes with the Iwata, you have to get it just right. And even then, it doesn't seem to want to go. Uh, you know, sometimes it'll go on the first try, the Iwata I'm talking about now. Uh, but generally, it takes three or four tries to get the threads to line up. And I was disappointed with that aspect of it right from day one. I, I, I remember thinking to myself when I first got it, they could have done this better. Um, <clears throat> how, how well the uh, chrome plating is going to stick to the parts better than the Iwata? Uh, are the parts made of brass, or are they just sort of some sort of other kind of metal? I don't know. But when you when you realize that it's it's ten times cheaper, and it works. Uh, at least it worked once. I haven't tried to put it back together again. Maybe I should uh, just turn the camera off here and put it all back together and see, you know, give give a, a better impression. A, a better first time impression. Uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be right back. Okay, we're all back together. Went back together just fine. Uh, no tendency to have anything cross thread or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to put this back on because the next time I use it, I might want to use the larger one. Um, you know, the one that has the cap on it. And, and as you remember, it comes with a, quite a, a really large reservoir. It also comes with two other needles, as I mentioned. The one that was in here for the spraying we just did was the 0.5 millimeter. Uh, maybe the next time we, we do it, I'll, I'll switch and I'll put in the 0.3 and see how it works with that. Uh, it's really too, too early to say. Uh, all I can say is, uh, so far, it looks good. It looks good.
Okay, I'm guessing it's only about two or three hours since we painted this. So the paint will not have cured, but I think it's safe to handle this without worrying about it uh, coming off on my fingers as long as I don't rub on it real hard. Now I'm hoping that these uh, pins are going to fit in those holes without a whole bunch of messing around here. It looks like they almost will. Maybe I should recompose and bring you in just a little bit closer here. Okay, I think I'll uh, make use of the steady rest here. Yeah, that should work out a little better, maybe. No. It almost goes. It almost goes. I think that if we put a little bit of extra thin in those square holes and just let it sit for a moment Notice on the end of the uh, applicator there, it's uh, turning deck tan. And one of the viewers was reminding me that now I'm going to put that back into the uh, into the glue bottle, and it's going to you know color the glue. So I'm just going to maybe take a little cloth here and wipe that off. Okay. Now I don't want to be smearing this around all over the place. I, I had thought this would go easier than it is. I suppose I could put some extra thin and let, and let it wick its way around the bottom there, but if I do, the uh, gray, the, ni the 19 gray is going to bleed into the deck tan, even though the deck tan has been clear coated. So I, I think that this discoloration that we see going on here, when it dries, is going to sort of disappear. I just want to make sure that the pegs are going to go all the way down because from normal perspective it does appear that it is flush with the deck so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is now in the back of my mind there's something that I wanted to remember to tell you and I can't think of what it is right now and uh, I guess as the old saying goes it must have been a lie <laughs> no it would not have been a lie uh, however, uh, what I do know is that, uh, as far as I know, this is the last piece to put on for step number nine. Yeah, um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> and I'm very happy with the way the uh, cheap airbrush painted it. It looks good to me. Now, I know we're not looking at it under the macro lens, but we're looking at it nice and close here. So, uh, I'm going to call our quits for today. It's actually quite late. As I'm speaking to you right now, it is 2.28, and uh, I still have to do the final edit yet. And I want to get this up and loaded on YouTube so it'll be available five, by 5 o'clock, Winnipeg time. Okay, thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.